In this short video, we'll be setting up a Schneider ATV320 VFD to be controlled via Modbus TCP. My hardware setup for this is this ATV320 you see here with the VW3A3600 card cage mounted to the front of it and then the Ethernet card slid up into the bottom. Uh, just to note, if you did the book style ATV320s, the Ethernet module slides right up into the bottom, no need for the external card cage. My references were this programming manual and this Modbus TCP manual, both that were stored on my computer. There may be newer versions online. I'm setting up my drive using the free SoMove software from the Schneider Electric website, currently version 2.9, and this USB to RS-485 cable by Schneider Electric, which plugs into the built-in RJ45 plug on the bottom of the VFD. Uh, you can also set the drive up using just the parameter unit from the front, although a bit tedious or you can set it up uh, with the parameter unit to get the IP address in there and then connect over Ethernet with SoMove to do the rest of the configuration. My setup cable has been plugged into my computer and was detected and showed up as COM4 in Device Manager. And then in here, I've told it to use COM4 under the settings here. And then I did the scan devices, as you can see, it's already on the list and it's been re-added. Double clicking on the device, it will automatically load from the device. All right, I factory defaulted my drive so that I could start fresh, and you can see I got an EPF2 fault. I believe that's something to do with the COM module, so I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'll just move forward with the network setup. I'm going to go to network settings, and I'm going to set it up for a fixed IP address and I just took the time to type in 192.168.420 with my subnet and my gateway, which I don't think the gateway is needed, but I put one in. I left the master IP address set to all zeros, which I'm under the impression means any master can take control of it. And I did adjust the timeout to five seconds. Now under the input output scanner, it's by default mapped some status and actual speed registers to be accessible via the scanner and a command register and a target velocity. I'm not going to make any changes to those. Um, the protocol was defaulted to TCP, but I am going to enable the input output scanner. Now I've gone to full command and I'm going to tell this thing that we're going to be using the COM module. I'm also going to go here to the control mode configuration. Uh, I like the IO profile. It's, it's just real simple as compared to like what I think is the default is the drive COM profile. So IO profile is what I use. Um, and then I'm going to tell it to use the COM card for its command signals. By default, we have that uh, five second timeout for the Ethernet, and there's no good way to reset it over the communications bus. So I like to go to monitoring, fault reset, and assign one of the CD bits. The CD bits are the ones that you interact with over the network. So I'm going to assign CDO2 to fault reset. Now we're using these CD bits because we chose the I.O. profile. Here you'll see the reverse is assigned to LI2, which is a physical input. We're going to change that to CDO1 in the event that I want to go backwards. You also make sure to click out of that field and make that change stay. And then I'm going to disconnect and cycle power to my drive. Okay, the drive's back up after cycling power. It looks happy, and it is replying to pings at the 4.20 address that I gave it. And I now have QMod Master, Free Utility Online. I have that set up with the correct IP address and port number for my VFD. The unit ID is 255. I got that from the TCP manual. It says that unit ID 255 is the I.O. scanner. Now I should be able to go online, start scanning. I'm going to start off with 0 and 0. Which push my drive in ready. Then I'll give it an RPM I want to travel at and give it a one for a go command. And you can see the drive should take off. If you want to see the input registers, then I have a five second timeout, so I got to do this within five seconds, but I'm going to stop the scan, change this to function code three, start the scan back up. And now I'm seeing the status word and the RPMs that it's currently traveling at. If you stop this for more than the f timeout, which is five seconds, 
what we set it to, then the drive will fault. But I have found that if I go back online with it, it does appear to automatically go to NST, which stands for network stop, in which case I can sort of start the process over again, setting a speed in RPMs, and then giving it a go command, and we're back up and running.